Rakesh Arora now joins us this morning. Rakesh, uh, what is the sense that you get of uh, the impact that investors have because of demonetization? Do you think investors have digested this? It's now old news and they are focusing in on what happens after that? Uh, right, Pankaj. Uh, basically, demonetization uh, is largely a small blip on the growth trajectory. It's unlikely to change uh, the course of uh, our consumption pattern significantly. So I don't think investors are too bothered about demonetization. Uh, it's rather global events which have been driving the markets lower and we have been seeing sustained uh, selling by FIs. And until unless that comes to us, you know, an end, uh, unlikely that markets can really move on uh, despite, you know, a little impact from demonetization. <clears throat> You know, you've been speaking to investors. Uh, how has their view changed after after this move? Uh, there will be a short-term problem. There will be a uh, you know medium-term disruption. Do you think investors are taking it positively that demand would bounce back once uh, we have a good uh, currency back into the system? Yeah, I think the general consensus which is building up is that uh, you know it's just one quarter or at the max two quarter impact. Uh, on the demand and unlikely to sustain uh, in the longer term. Uh, when investors are willing to give, you know, P multiples of 30, 40 times to these companies, uh, I think they are looking well beyond one or two quarters. So uh, to me and, uh, you know, from speaking to other guys, it's very clear that demonetization is not the real driver of this market. Uh, it did, you know, I think the impact of demonetization was factored on the first day itself. Post that, it has all been, uh, you know, FI selling, which is driving it. Right. Uh, you know, if you look at the Bloomberg consensus now or any, you know, major consensus in terms of earnings, uh, markets would be trading at about 15 times or probably 14 and a half times one year forward. But that number will go down, you think, in the next two, three quarters? Uh, and that's why it would not be correct to just look at valuations on those bases? In fact, uh, there's a chance that you know numbers might get upgraded for FI18 uh, because there will be a pent-up demand uh, from FI17, which will get transferred to FI18. So I'm not really you know too concerned about numbers uh, you know seeing a downgrade from where they are right now. And uh, historical 10-year average is also around 14 and a half, 15 times for the market. So market is now looking uh, you know reasonably um, uh, valued. I won't say it is deep value as yet but it is reasonably valued and uh, as the reform momentum continues i think investors will be willing to give a higher p multiple to indian markets and uh, so you know let's see how the gst rollout happens and government has been also taking a lot of uh, fast actions so uh, next 6 months you know the reform process is going to define whether we go back to 16 17 p multiple where the market was before this whole uh, demonetization and uh, uh, the U.S. elections made an impact. Right. You know, you look at uh, Sensex EPS, you have, uh, all, sorry, Nifty EPS, you've always tried to calculate it, estimate it. Uh, but, you know, with this sort of demonetization that has come in, you would wait for the data to come in rather than just expect what will be the cut, what will be the disruption that you see. Uh, wait for the budget because, you know, they will speak much about what happens, what, what has happened about it. And on the basis of that, there may be some changes in a lot of tax structure, not only for individuals, but also for a lot of sectors. And that's why you would just wait till the March numbers to come out and then take a call on what's the EPS number rather than trying to predict what will be the uh, downgrade now and then probably on the base effect, what will be the upgrade? And that is true, uh, Pankaj. Basically, see, FI17 is where the numbers are more murky as compared to FI18. So I don't think anybody is valuing the companies or uh, the market on FI17 numbers uh, now. Everybody is looking to FI18. And uh, from whatever we are hearing on uh, budget, as you rightly pointed out, there could be you know a lot of tax changes. There could be incentives for the rural economy. So all these things point to a better FI18 as compared to where people were expecting it as of now. So I would not really wait for a confirmation as to you know where the FI18 numbers would. Uh, markets are now back to you know 10-year averages, and you know the dips uh, should be used to enter the market. 
because you know the reform process is going to you know at least uh, boost our GDP growth um, from current six and a half seven percent where it is to probably eight percent plus. Right. Uh, you know, in terms of any portfolio, if you would look in the last fifteen years or twenty years, one of the big contributor has been high end luxury. Uh, you know, consumption or consumer durable. Maybe if, you know, AC was earlier a luxury. Now it's not. But uh, you know, the that 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 has essentially you know seen a big PE expansion. There you expect a bit of pause. So there may be new sectors which may come up. There may be new uh, sectors where you may see flows coming in. And the structural consumption story for India may just uh, you know take a while before it plays out. Yeah, so in the last five years, uh, there has been a significant P rating for uh, the consumption sectors because most of the investors were, uh, you know, flocking towards uh, consumption as a safe theme. And clearly, you know, the P multiples, which used to be around 20, 25 time P, uh, went up to 35, 40. Even for, you know, some of the non consumer, uh, but rather commodity kind of uh, companies like cement. Uh, and uh, you know plywood or uh, uh, tiles they were also trading at 35 40 p which made really no sense so this correction was always in the making and uh, i think investors now woken up to uh, the real reality that you know these sectors can't really outgrow too much uh, beyond where the economy is and uh, so th you know that is what is leading to a sharper uh, than market correction in these sectors and uh, i think there could be still uh, you know some more time correction which can happen in these sectors uh, before they become reasonably priced right uh, and you know when probably you would have started to cover any of these names like havels uh, crompton consumer or probably some of the other durable companies they were trading at 12 times 13 times which expanded to about uh, 30 times in the last 5 to 6 years that 30 you expect to go back to 12 or you know about a 20 25 or maybe 30 percent correction uh, will mean that uh, you know worst is factored so if we're expecting market to trade around uh, you know 15 16 p multiple uh, these stocks can easily trade between 20 to 25 p multiple uh, they will always command a premium because, you know, no government intervention and, you know, these companies have a free market to really operate. And uh, most of these companies are free cash flow generating companies. So they will always trade at a premium to the market. And uh, so 2025 uh, is the band, I think, where uh, investors should be comfortable looking at these stocks. Um, uh, but, you know, 30 plus uh, was in any case uh, looking a bit stretched. Uh, currently, we are seeing expansion in multiple of some of the cyclical sectors uh, like uh, metals, etc. So, our rebalancing is already on the way right now. Right. Uh, we've seen banks and, you know, banking names. We, we basically got both sort of views. So, most of the, you know, investors say that there will be asset quality issues. But others say that, you know, 10% retention in what money which comes in would boost the CASA plus the rates in the system would go down. How would you look at, uh, you know, these banking names? Uh, will now it become a very, very specific uh, run? Because earlier we were seeing all private banking names go up. All PSU banking names went up from the lows of Feb. So now it will become very selective. The one which can manage their asset quality will command a very big premium. See, in terms of NPAs, if you look at, uh, they are largely driven by, you know, metal and mining and infrastructure space. And I don't think, you know, those sectors have been hurt at all because of demonetization. So it's unlikely that, uh, you know, we will see too much of uh, NPS stress largely in the public sector space. Uh, but clearly the retail focused banks uh, might see a little bit of increase in the near term. Uh, but, you know, that would last only for a quarter or so. So I would rather use, uh, you know, this correction which is happening uh, probably to look at some of these names which are coming back to long-term averages on price-to-book multiple. I mean, clearly, NBFC is trading at six-time price-to-book was untenable. So, you know, obviously, the correction is going to be sharper. With crude prices going back to 50-55, would you start to worry about some of the companies that have huge exposure to crude in terms of their raw materials? Uh, they've got re-rated quite a bit. 
So you would just uh, want to see the impact. Well, see, um, in terms of crude price, um, now the Indian economy is a little bit uh, more insulated uh, because uh, there's a general pass-through of uh, the price increases. So it will never come as a shock to the system. And uh, fortunately, we have seen that most of the companies have been able to maintain or improve their margins uh, despite low capacity utilization. So I'm just hoping that, you know, these companies will be able to pass on. Um, so, you know, an increase to $55, $60 is not really a big worry uh, right now. Uh, but if, if crude was to jump to $80 or $100, probably, you know, we might have to have a relook on uh, some of the names. Right. Uh, in terms of oil uh, and probably oil names, I know you cannot talk about stocks, but, you know, names like Reliance, names like ONGC, which are beneficiary if oil prices actually go up. That is something which you would start to look, maybe even a Cane India, HOAC. So companies that produce oil or get benefit out of better oil prices. Uh, would that now be an overweight in your portfolio? Well, see, clearly oil has been one of the massive underperformers in the, co in the commodity basket. And uh, it's now starting to catch up a little bit. And, you know, the news coming out of OPEC was also uh, kind of positive. So I think this uh, should support uh, some of these oil companies and uh, so a little bit of weight increase, uh, you know, can be done. Uh, but see, these are very small weightages in the whole system. So um, for a company like Reliance, I don't think it's going to be a big kicker. Uh, but for other oil companies, I think it's uh, still a massive uh, increase.